guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, I decided to do a video after all on how to set up a bandsaw. Now, this is a 9-inch Mastercraft bandsaw. Most of your 9-inch um, bandsaws are going to be the same sort of deal you would set up. Uh, so you're going to need the tools that came with your saw, be it Allen keys, what have you. Um, you may or may not need a flat blade screwdriver. In this case, I do. So the first thing we're going to do is pop the cover on the top. Alright, we'll open the door. Now I'm going to have to move the camera here so you guys can see what's going on. So the first thing we want to check is the blade tracking. Now they've got this thing, I guess it can go either way. I guess it goes either way. So anyways, first thing I want to check is the tension. That actually seems not too bad. So you go down to loosen, up to tighten. Clockwise, clockwise to tighten it. So in the book here they talk about removing and adjusting the blade. Clockwise raises the blade guide, so up we go. Uh, open the table guard by pulling left side, release all blade tension from the blade. Okay, so slowly turn upper idler wheel to the right clockwise by hand, engage blade, adjust both upper and lower blade guides as explained later in the manual. Reattach the D-nut flash washer to the wing screw, tighten securely. Uh, we don't have any D washers to worry about or D-nuts. Close the blade guard, open the lower door. Um, okay. So your blade should be pretty much uh, centered on the wheel, according to what they tell you here. They don't really give you a whole lot in here to go by. Tracking the blade. Disconnect the bandsaw from power source. Check the position of the blade. Rotate the lower drive wheel, number one, by hand in a clockwise direction. View blade through tracking window. Loosen blade tracking knob two. If blade rides away from the cabinet, turn the tracking knob clockwise. If the blade rides toward the cabinet, turn the tracking knob counterclockwise. Tighten the blade tracking knob to secure the blade in proper position. Isn't this wonderful? This is a little bit more uh, in-depth than any of my other bandsaws I've ever had. So we'll go with what they want done here. Alright, that's secure. For this, I'm going to recommend a flashlight so you can actually see what's going on inside here. going to go with that actually looks good let's open up 
the bottom door. This is a new saw for me. I have never had a Mastercraft saw before. I know how to set these things up, but some have different little things than others. In this case, this one does. That's pretty much bang on. One little tiny tweak on the back and that's all it needed. What I'm doing is looking for center between the back of the blade. See how much meat's left to the front of the blade with teeth. So you got to kind of like imagine in your brain there's no teeth on here. And look to make sure that everything looks like it's running in the center. And uh, it seems to be. So, that part is done. Now we've got to open the top door again. Now your tracking knob is going to be on the back of your machine. It's uh, usually your lower knob. At least it is on this one. Like I said, other 9 inch saws may be different. So when I look at this and I see how much meat is showing of the rubber wheel to the front end and I make believe there's no teeth, that's going to eyeball it at looking like it's it's pretty, damn, pretty darn centered. I don't think it gets much better than that. Because you don't want to go over the edge because then your, your blade can flip this way and you don't want these teeth anywhere near the metal front or your blade can actually flip off on you. You gotta have it riding in the center. So, oh, isn't that kind of neat? So you can actually do this just right. You can loosen the blade off enough to just pop it, pretty much. So I can go either way. Alrighty then. That's the way she wrote the book. So, next part we have to do, which I'm going to attempt to give you a very good close-up as much as I can. Alright, now you've got these Two little fingers, okay? Now these are um, left and right movements that you don't want to go left or right with, okay? What you want to do though is before you even do this is make sure you've backed these off so that there's lots of free space for the blade to run, okay? And have your blade guard, uh, your throat up a bit. There's technical names to all this stuff. I could care less about technical names myself, but you know, I'm trying to make this easy for everybody. So, and I don't care for technical names, like I said. So the first thing we got to do is we have to adjust these little fingers. So just loosen off your screws and these will move in freely back and forth like so. Okay. So what you want to do is get yourself a feeler gauge. You're going to need a feeler gauge for this operation. 
and you need two thousandths of clearance. So you want to put that feeler gauge right up in there and then just gently push that in. Now this is where it's going to get tricky so we're going to see if we can do this like so. Because you want to just touch the feeler gauge to there. And you go to the other side and you do the same thing. Now, once you've got them like that, just a little bit of a snug move, a little bit of snugness here, and your feeler gauge should go right in there easy, no problem there. Now, if you move your feeler gauge up and down and you see movement, you've got it too tight. So, next thing we got to do is we've got to do the bearing. Now, I would suggest looking at the pins to your blade here and see how close those pins are coming to the teeth. Because you don't want them touching the teeth. You want them just a hair in behind. Just a slight hair. actually going to move that forward just a little bit. It doesn't take much. Sorry if my head's in the way. That looks good. Now you want to snug this one up a bit? Don't reef because this is plot. Um, well, I think. Yeah, that's plastic too. That is the only one thing I really don't like about this thing, is the plastic part of stuff. Oh, the door opens. Didn't know that. Now we get a better view. Okay, looks like... Yeah, it looks like I'm good there. That's got to get loosened up. where I was telling you about that whole too tight thing. This is time consuming, which is the reason why I really didn't want to do this video, but I thought, well, Somebody's going to ask. Okay, 
that's good. Now, I'm going to redo this side. So if you buy a 9 inch, 9 inch bandsaw or any bandsaw and you take it right out of the box and start using it, that's a bad idea. You have to set these things up first. So that's all good. Now we got to do the bearing. This is the fun part. This also requires 2000s clearance. You're going to have to do this at the back. So loosen off your bearing. I don't know how well you can see this, but my feeler gauge is in there. So you're going to snug that up a little bit. Again, you don't want to see movement when you put this in and out, other than, I mean, it's going to shift a little bit left and right, but. Otherwise, you should be golden. Now it looks like we're good to go. spot on the blade. I'll oh, see how long this blade lasts. Anyways, this is the factory blade. There's another reason why I bought a spare blade. Just in case. If something's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong with the factory stuff. So I got a little bit of room back and forth here, which is what you need. And just a hairball to go towards the back. So, now that we're done this part, let me zoom out. I don't know how much of this you guys are catching, but hopefully my explanation really helps you out a lot. So, what we want to do now is we want to loosen off the throat. And we want to run it up. And that is yeah, that's max height there. Oh, that's good. Stops right up against there. Run smooth there. Now I want to put it about halfway down. Run smooth. Run smooth. And 
totally bottom new. Okay, so now that we've got that done, now we're gonna go do the bottom. Now the bottom, I'm, you guys can do it yourself. Um, the bottom end is pretty much exactly the same as the top, except you don't have to worry about the tracking stuff. Uh, but you're gonna have the same tooth out clearance on either pin, same tooth out clearance on the bearing. And it's down here, um, down below the, the table here. So you gotta open the door to get access to everything. But that's how you set these things up. And they can be a little finicky. <coughs> so what you want to do is, once you've got it all sorted out, set up, your blade tracking is centered, all that other jazz, okay? You want to run some test pieces of wood through it. Uh, make sure it's cutting properly. Run some test cuts, seeing how straight it cuts. You know, you've got your rip fence that goes on here, plus your uh, miter gauge. So you want to test those cuts and, you know, even do a couple angle cuts. Make sure it's keeping it straight. Now, the other thing important about band saws, if you don't know, is, yes, it's a band saw. Yes, it's got like a bazillion teeth on here that when they're sharp, they can cut very easily. Um, but you can't force pieces through. You have to, you know, you'll figure out the pace, you know. But you're not whipping stuff through like a madman. All right, and you're not going super, super dead slow like 3D mode, like you know, being on the moon type of thing, but just a little bit more than the moon actually. Um, because if you go too fast, what's happening is you're going to get a lot of flex in here that you don't want, and that'll mess up your cut. You know, I mentioned this on my unboxing video that you know, guys for the Mastercraft one, I've seen reviews. And some of them are absolute morons, you know, because they buy it and they're all pissy because, oh, it doesn't cut straight where the darn and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, other people have gotten on there and say, hey, if you set it up right, you wouldn't have a problem. I've had this for a couple of years and it's great. You know, cuts straight. It's very precision once it is set up. You know, just because you can buy it for an inexpensive price does not make it garbage. You know, you do have to set these things up, you know, to make them work properly. And like I said, I'm no stranger to band saws. I've had a few of them, and uh, I've had no problems. Now, I'll say this much, though. When your blade goes dull, things you'll notice. It'll start burning the wood, or it just won't cut into it properly. You know, wood that used to cut real simple, not cutting anymore. Um, you know, you're, you're going to go off course. It's not going to cut straight, you know, because your blade is too dull. You know, so if you've done everything right from the beginning and you've got this all set up, you know, perfectly dead on, you were doing perfect straight cuts, and then all of a sudden one of these days, oh, it's not cutting very well. What's wrong? You know, it's not cutting straight or it's not cutting very well. Well, teeth do get dull after a while, so you got to change your blades every once in a blue moon, right? And if you're switching to different types of blades, like there's a really super fine tooth cutting blade that I want to get for this thing, and I had it on my... Uh, my smaller one, I had a 9 inch before, years ago, and um, it's a really nice blade, and oh, can it ever cut, you know, and uh, so anyways, I want to pick that same blade up again, and uh, I know when I change my blade, my tracking gets changed, these have to all get changed, your settings, it's a whole reset up, every time you change to a different blade, even a brand new blade can cause you to have to do this setup procedure again, to make sure everything's still dialed in you know and these little finger joints you know they will wear over time so you have to keep an eye and adjust them once in a while because if everything else is good and you know you're you're getting bad cuts you know like it's not cutting straight enough then you know these are going to wear in so i would suggest running maybe i don't know maybe a few days worth of you know cutting uh with these settings and then go back and double check and retweak them because these these pins have to break in you know but check all three your settings one two and three check them all make sure they're all still at two thousands and it doesn't cost much for a feeler gauge and if you're wondering how uh what the measurement is in two thousands uh for you it's 0 0.002 or 0 0.051 of a millimeter that's really super thin stuff um in the book they suggested using a playing card actually but i think a playing card is way too thick in here because uh, a playing card, like all card brands are different, different thicknesses, right? So get a feeler gauge. They don't cost much, and they're proper. So anyways, that's all I got for you. Um, like I said, I'm going to go do the bottom myself, but doing the bottom is the same as the top, except for, you know, a couple of less steps that you need to, to worry about right now. 
And uh, hey, we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.